because what he needs isn't an answer. Just time. If it isn't Yoi Mia. Come on in, dear. Come and take a seat. Are these two your friends? Yes, they're travelers from afar. Outsiders have a very difficult time getting into Inazuma nowadays. Indeed, these are unprecedented times. But seeing as they came all this way, we locals should give them a warm welcome. Hmm. Oh, uh, before I forget, I brought the fireworks that you ordered. Oh, thank you, dear. Your family is so good to us every year. First your father, and now you. I wonder if I'll still be around to see the next hair of Naganaharo fireworks. Of course you will. You're both in great health. Don't say things like that. It's bad luck. We aren't as young as we once were, though. The body knows it. It used to be that I could spend all day working the land, carrying water back and forth. But now, even a moment of light work leaves me with all sorts of aches and pains. I wanted to do some weeding yesterday, but as soon as I bent down to get started, I suddenly felt that if I went any further, I wouldn't be able to get back up again. No worries. Say no more. We'll handle it. No, no, no. We can't be putting you to work when you're a guest in our home. I'll just go fetch the tea and some snacks, and then we'll continue our conversation. It's fine. It's not like it's the first time I've helped you with chores. I just haven't had much time recently with the fireworks show coming up. But once that's out of the way, I'll be sure to come by more often. It's no trouble, really. We don't mind helping. Oh, you're such good kids. As for mine, he's all grown up now. Hasn't found anyone yet. And he doesn't visit very often. Uh, if you're quite sure it's no trouble, then... I have some pickled radish here. Would you mind delivering it to Satoru on the other side of the village? Sure. It won't take us a moment. The old folks aren't very mobile, so come on, let's help them out. We'll get rid of the weeds first, and then deliver the pickled radish. should just about do it. Satoru is on the other side of the village. Let's go see him now. Hey, Satoru. How have you been? Keeping well? Yeah, same as usual. Not much has changed. You're looking full of life, as always. All thanks to the support of our loyal customers, the family business just keeps getting better and better. We sold some fireworks to Liu at a while back, and word is, they were a real hit. So it looks like we'll be getting more business from over there in the future. That must mean a lot more work for you, though. Are you sure you and Mr. Ryunosuke can manage? If it gets too much, I don't forget, you can always ask me for help, hmm? We should be fine. I think we can cope. Oh, yeah. Um, this is some pickled radish from Mrs. Imatani. Oh, wow, thank you so much. I never used to be a fan of pickled radish, would you believe? But then I tried some of Mrs. Imatani's homemade stuff and I couldn't get enough of it. It's a family staple now. Speaking of your family, how's everyone doing? They're doing well. We have the occasional heated argument, but I guess that's every family ever. Being close to family is better than never getting to see them. 
even if it does mean putting up with some conflict. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Imatani seem to have a great relationship, but still, they must get lonely with their child never visiting. Huh, they didn't seem that way to me. I think they're just used to it. You make a good point, though. I should drop by more often in the future. That way, they won't get so bored. Oh, I'm sure they'd love that, as would all of us in Konda Village. You're always welcome here. <laughs> Thank you! Now that we've finished all the chores, it's time to talk to the Imatanis about Sakujiro. One day, I'll be as great as Ryuji. That was quick! Ah, young people are so handy. Younger people have bundles of energy, and older people have a wealth of wisdom. Each have their strengths. Speaking of youth, do you know what? It's been 50 years this year. Oh, so it has. Goodness, how the time flies. You barely notice as the years go by, but then suddenly, 50 years have passed. 50 years since what? Some important day? <laughs> well, if you must know, it was 50 years ago, back in the days when this young lady was still trying to win me over, that... Oh, stop trying to impress them. <laughs> we both know you were the one who was hopelessly smitten and desperately trying to win my affection. Well, maybe you're right. <laughs> Fifty years ago, I proposed to my wife at the Naganahara fireworks show. We've been together ever since. Mm, to tell the truth, I was still a little uncertain. I wasn't sure what I was doing when I walked into the Naganahara's shop and ordered my firework. Even as it was rising up into the sky, uh, I still had no clue what I was going to say. But then it exploded, the sky lit up, I looked back at her and saw her eyes twinkling in the light of the fireworks. Before I knew what was happening, apparently, I'd already said it. And, well, she'd said yes. Fifty years. In some ways, it's a long time. In others, it's no time at all. Really, it's just a number. But fifty years of being together? Now that is something worth commemorating. I had no idea it was your 50th anniversary! If I'd known, I would have made some extra fancy fireworks just for you. Oh no, it's quite alright. We always set off the same firework every year. It wouldn't be the same without it. Seeing that firework go off takes us right back to those days. Even at this age. We still look back with not a single regret. Ah, oh, what a great relationship they have. <laughs> Enough about us, though. Yoimiya, aren't you busy with the fireworks show coming up? Was there something you needed to discuss? Yeah, um, it's a difficult thing to talk about, but here goes. Hmm, Sakujiro. So, he came back. Huh? You know him? He was our boy's best friend when they were young. <sighs> they were inseparable. They grew up together, shared everything with each other, and went everywhere together. But one day, they had a terrible argument. Sakujiro seemed to feel that Inazuma was too peaceful and wanted to see what the outside world was like. But our Keisuke took after his father and mother. He felt that there was nothing wrong at all with being peaceful. You know what children are like. They get terribly worked up about these sorts of things. In the end, Sakujiro stormed off, and that was that. I see. Keisuke said nothing to me or my wife about the fight. We could sense that he was very hurt by it, but he didn't want to talk with us about how he was really feeling. Eventually, whether out of pent-up anger or 
for some other reason, he joined the Tenryo Commission. He rarely comes home anymore. If it was anything else, I could talk to Keisuke, and I'm sure he'd be willing to help. But since it's Sakujiro, I don't feel there's any way we can get involved. What a strange coincidence! Who'd have thought? I understand now. When I asked Sakujiro why he came back, he just said because of past mistakes and wasn't willing to elaborate. Now I finally understand why he can't decide what to do. Two best buddies in childhood. One grows up to join the Tenryo Commission, the other grows up to join the Tenryo Commission's most wanted list. Well, no worries. If that's the case, then never mind. We can find some other way to help Sakujiro. There's no need to make things difficult for you. This sounds like something for Sakujiro and Keisuke to resolve between themselves. Yes. Oh, it'd be so nice if they could go back to the way things were. I think after all these years, they ought to let go of their grudges. <sighs> well, can't say we didn't try. I'll let Sakujiro know after we get back. Yoimiya, something bad's happened. Some people from the Tinryo Commission came by. Huh? Why? Do they know? Pops, are you alright? They didn't do anything to you, did they? I told them the show was starting soon and the place was filled with fireworks, so they shouldn't go in because it's a fire hazard. But they didn't listen. It seemed like they knew Sakujiro was inside. Luckily... Sakujiro heard them coming in time and managed to escape through the window. The Tenryo Commission wasn't able to capture him. Oh, this is bad news. I don't think Sakujiro had enough time to make his mind up. Pops, did you see where he went? Oh, the Tenryo Commission will definitely be chasing after him. Good point. Names. We need names. Suddenly showing up like this, surely it must be Keisuke's doing. The commission wouldn't normally cause this big of a fuss over a stowaway. Oh, sorry, my ears are no good. And I didn't get a good look at them either. If you're wondering which way they went, they left the city. I wish I'd caught their names. Oh, but I didn't hear a thing. As it happens, I did. I was getting some ore from my friend's place and happened to bump into them on the way over. I think their leader's name was Keisuke, just like you said. Just as I thought. Thanks. If Sakujiro still hasn't made up his mind, those two running into each other won't solve anything. And even worse, there'll be no coming back from it for Sakujiro. We can't let that happen. Come with me. Let's track them down. Yeah. 